summer, Mike likes machine guns. I like machine guns. Episode 15. I can't believe we're still here. Did we start? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're doing it. <laughs> Special guest, Vincent Vargas. Yeah. AKA Rocco. Rocco. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. What's the rub? Is that you're sponsored by Pepper? Well, we're actually sponsored by... What is it? Let me do a Vanna White on it. Ooh. Musket powder. Mm-hmm. I like it. Can I There's, take one home? You can take this one. <laughs> yeah. This good one stuff. has been on all the podcasts. Yeah, I'm going to take it home. Yeah, they're good people. They okay. even outfitted uh, Mike with clothing. There's a lot of uh, different flavors of it. Well, I have a lot of kids, and I cook a lot, and I have my little Traeger, and sometimes I just do whatever. And so I'm always looking for a new rub or or seasoning so cool y'all maybe musket powder would sponsor your podcast uh, hopefully. Uh, hopefully they sponsor my family Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i got uh did you lose your mic there i lost my mic for a second yeah. my bad but yeah hopefully they sponsor it did, did i cuss no <laughs> you can <though. laughs> okay good good remember we had rudy on there's nothing you can do that's going to shock us at this point <laughs> <laughs> well there is one thing I've heard episode 100 of another <laughs> podcast oh. was more shocking, so we're Facts. probably not going to go that way. Yeah, we, we pivoted. My, I pivoted in my life at that point. That's when I did a big pivot. So. Yeah. yeah, we don't need that kind of shock. <laughs> yeah. The Lord called you out of that situation. Uh, I know. <laughs> I would like to say before we really get started and thank the great people at Arrowhead that we could get past that whole tap water filtered thing and move on, and they've continued up their game yeah that's huge yeah arrowhead's a great sponsor we're super <laughs> thankful for him shout out spring water from the state of washington that's, yeah, that's awesome delicious water yeah. i've never had a sponsor that big well maybe <laughs> rich could help you yeah i was able to, to convince that. them with our 45 listeners now yeah. i think well when we got arrowhead i think we were at um I think we were in the teens, maybe sep- 17. <laughs> I suggest. I think we had, that's what we went to them with. We have 17 listeners, so. Yeah. That's funny. How to win friends somebody. and influence people by Dale Carnegie. Salesman's Bible. I convinced them with that many listeners to sponsor that's, our podcast. I can't even get Manscaped to sponsor me, dude. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. I'll hit you with the contact. It's, I'm just not very good at, like, pushing, you know, Promo code, you yeah. know. I'm, I don't I, do that I, either. I suck at it. I do it. I'll do it for yeah. like the right price. Trust yeah. me. But we uh, see if Arrowhead will give us a promo code. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they would? That'd be so funny. Listen, when you go order it uh, online, order your water. Use promo code. Bing. I just hope they don't come back and be like, uh, <sighs> "So we've." I guess been sponsoring your podcast for the last fifteen episodes. I hope we don't hear from their lawyer. Yeah. No, you're gonna get crates and crates and it's water, dude. Right? It's water. They're yeah. gonna be like, Yeah, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> here you go. I do drink a gallon a day. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I, I need Ar- to. arrowhead. Yeah. I need to. Yeah. For the muscles. Mm-hmm. It's part of getting in shape. Yeah. Yeah. If Rich doesn't wet his muscles down, <laughs> they hurt. <laughs> he can't move. Oh, is that man. right? That's true. You've gotten big, bro. Thank you. Yeah. I'm trying. In well, a good I'm actually, way. I'm in trying a to great trim. way. I've yeah. gotten big in a bad way. Uh, you've gotten, yeah, you've gotten, you're, I saw your arms the other day. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? I love it. Copious amounts of steroids. He's sculpting <laughs> his body. <laughs> <laughs> Rich is yokeled. Yeah. Yeah, no. no all natural. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are not watching this on YouTube and listening to it on uh, iTunes or TR- TRT is a hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah, it was. Hey, it's prescribed. Come on, dude. TRT uh, Vitor Belfort was a scary bastard. That's the UFC fighter. Oh. One of the UFC fighters on the TRT was like the scariest motherfucker in the room. But that's when they decided, like, yeah, no more, no, no more. more. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to put this in your body anymore. So they like test him now. Yeah, now you you can't use performance enhancing drugs, uh, and TRT is part of that. Even if you need it prescribed they just won't allow it and there's there's many reasons why speaking of drugs you've got a a new podcast i do i have a new podcast it's uh, called the branches of struggle uh and we talk about mental health and addiction uh it's sponsored by a company called beach tree diagnostics who does urinalysis testing and so um it's cool you know so i have the vinnie rock podcast that's that's my own i've been doing that for about three years now 
and I just interview whoever. I just have fun with that one. Where can they find you on that? Uh, Vinny Rock Podcast is everywhere, actually. You can get it on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere that podcasts are uploaded, um, and you can find my Instagram you know, all the social media platforms. And then Branch of the Struggle is new. So I just launched the the Facebook. Uh, I just did a live feed actually on my personal um, Facebook page. So, you know, we, there's like 100,000 followers on there. So we'll get like 12 listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, put you in touch with my contacts at Arrowhead. <laughs> yeah, I think we can get a sponsorship now. Hold on. <laughs> You're starting with 12? Yeah. Dude. We're doing things. We're doing things. No, but it's cool, man, to to hit on that mental health side of things. I think it's become a very important conversation that is awesome, that is becoming, uh, you know, very common. And Mm -hmm. so I want to be a part of that movement, right? I want to be a part of that, talking about mental health and getting guys, you know, whatever medications they need, or if not even that, testosterone, testosterone replacement therapy is another good one for people that struggle with depression, men Mm -hmm. and women, uh, hormone deficiencies, and and all these different things. So I'm I'm going down the list of friends and interviewing a ton of people that, uh, you know, can provide value in that space. And so it's another cool one, man. It's just something I like to do on the side when I have time. Well, and that's a, you're, there's a passion that's driving that too, you know, uh, with the veteran community um, and, you yeah. know, the struggles that are going on there. Um, yeah, that's really where it comes from, right? It, it roots from trying to continue to provide value for the community uh, in, in a veteran community who struggles uh, a lot. Mm-hmm. And so trying to find answers and, and push these motherfuckers to do more shit, yeah. right, to be, be successful. So That's awesome. You know, I admire that, and I've – always looked up to you as the a person of influence that is still normal and you still want to take time out of your day to help other people. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I try and stay grounded with it, you know? Yeah, I don't think most people can do that, so. Fame could be a weird drug, man. That's a drug of its own, right? Uh, you know, we, we work in a community of people that are influencers and sometimes um, getting a lot of attention really fast can 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 have people turn into a different version of themselves, you know? Sure, and so sure. you have to learn how to harness that. I think there was a time where I kind of was really excited about it, right? I think early on I was like, oh, well, this is fucking cool, you know? And then mm-hmm. you start to realize how empty that is, right? And how worthless that kind of buzz is and saying, okay, well, with this attention that I have now, what can I turn around and pivot and, and make it a positive? And so using that influence for, for good, not evil is what I like to say. You know, That's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's what I try to do. I think most people just get self-centered and turn within. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, fuck, it's a weird thing, dude. It's a weird mm-hmm. thing when you, ca- when you catch fame, right? Mm-hmm. And, and my fame is so little compared to like some fucking crazy motherfuckers, but there is something that to it, and you're tr- trying to navigate sure. that and also navigate a family and, and well, navigate a relationship. Mm-hmm. You have enough to help people. Try, brother. So. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. I've fallen victim to that, and obviously, like, this is from the gun bunny standpoint. Yeah, I've seen that. your path, yeah. Yeah, but you know, you get it does get even a little bit, it yeah. does get in your head. And then when you start making mistakes because you're becoming somebody that you're not, right? That's when you have to sit there and reflect and be like, you know what? I need to go this way. Yeah, well, dude, I remember, I remember in El Paso, that's kind of when the fucking big tidal wave of like the following and viral videos of, of Article 15 clothing era for me. Um, I remember being in the gym and my, 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 Instagram handle was Big Poppy Official. And it was just kind of a fucking joke. Like, I call myself Big Poppy just as a joke. That's hot. <laughs> My wife hates it. <laughs> My wife hates it. Sure. People, people still use that. And yeah. she's like, what the fuck? When are they going to forget that name? I so like, when, when I get a chance to meet her and we break bread and we bring the families <laughs> together, I'll come up and say, what's up, Big Poppy? <laughs> She's going to seriously later tonight. She goes, God damn it. Man. <laughs> but I had my, my handle is Big Poppy Official. And I went to the gym and some dude's like, Big Poppy Official, what's up? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> they don't even know my name, bro. They know the handle of my yeah. Instagram. And that's when you know, like, something's fucked there. Mm-hmm. So it didn't take long for me. I just changed it. Vincent Rock of Arc. It's like, here's my name. Yeah. Because starting to turn into this image of what they see you as like I was an Instagram Instagram character Mm -hmm. right and that's fucking exhausting to to portray the character that we do on social media for other people to entertain right yeah yeah. people forget that you're playing a character to market yep us on article 15 we're marketing our brand of t-shirts and it was an exaggerated version of ourselves which is fucking cool which is fine but when you see me in a bar and you think I'm still that motherfucker and you can't (laughs) disconnect the the truth from fucking characters like I want to be like bitch Wake yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. And, yeah. and that is a, 
something that I see today being part of like, you know, I'm an actor on a show called Mayans MC, right? It's one of the bigger shows out there. I say this line on episode three. I said, you know, all these fans of Sons of Anarchy, right? Like yeah. fucking, they're incredible, but they're so fucking passionate. Yes. That I said a line about Jax Teller. I said, someone says like, who the fuck's Jax Teller? And I said, who gives a fuck, right? Bro, the hate mail I got from that. Yes. The hate mail I got from that. They're like, listen, fucking Rocco, you don't get it, man. Like fucking say some shit like that. And I was like, bitch. I'm an actor. <laughs> this is a TV show. Yeah. yeah, I am portraying a character. And there's a difference between Gilly from the show and Vincent Rocco Vargas, right? And so this funny thing is that there is a huge disconnect from, from viewers, from fans, from followers that sometimes we can get soaked into that. And when you do that, you start losing who you are. Mm -hmm. It's fucking nuts. That is nuts. Well, at least you didn't get the amount of hate mail that LeVron got. Who, Le Le LeBron? Oh, yeah, that's what I said, LeBron. LeBron. <laughs> Is that, sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. Let's, let's mispronounce some other names. <laughs> I'm, I just want to make sure we're on the same page no, here. No, we are. The I, same person? Yeah. <laughs> or is it never, LeBron down the street who works at the gas station? I'm, I'm not sure who we're talking about. No, it's about. LeBron the, um, the basketball hockey guy. or what. Yeah, <laughs> basketball. That's what I said. For when he, when he posted that, that thing about the, the cop? Yeah, correct. Yeah, that was interesting. Very, very interesting times we live in. Yes, it is. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss? I, I mean, I, I personally miss pre-Facebook, even pre-MySpace. You know. You know, the flip phones and the I, texting. I, you you got to use it f to your advantage, and you have to learn how to, to just deal with what you have, right? Mm -hmm. Like... I have guys, like, veterans are, like, probably the first guys to just get super irate about things, right? And you're like, oh, my God, can you fucking believe it? And you're like, <laughs> bro, turn it off. Yeah. You don't, yeah. <laughs> turn it off. You can unfollow any page at it's any true. time. And we get sucked into, like, L let me hear what this motherfucker's saying now, yeah. you know? And, man, it, it, that's why social media has been very dangerous, right? It, it's mm -hmm. very dangerous because... So, so a guy like LeBron, I mean, look, he posted that. What, what he, anyone who's listening, watching, he posted a picture of the law enforcement officer that shot the girl who was about to stab another girl in a confrontation. And he wanted justice for that cop after the revealing of the, the, the decision that was made for, for the cop that, that put his knee on uh, Floyd. Floyd's mm -hmm. neck. And so he said, justice, justice serve, you're next, right? Something like that. In, in the reality of like all the social media, and I don't talk on this stuff very, very often because right. I am a former law enforcement officer. I'm also, a, you know, a guy that just kind of like everyone can fucking do their own thing. I can give two fucks with your opinion. Sure. Right? But, yeah. but it's just an example of the lack of, of doing research and, you know, confirmation bias, right? And confirmation biases. I'm going to college, so I'll explain that real quick. You're going to be <laughs> biased on what you believe in your head on any subject at any time. And if you believe that cops are bad, well, then you're always, you're not going to look deeper into every story and just assume, oh, yeah, it's the same thing. Boom. You know, when you start piling everything into this, to this broad spectrum answer is why we have a problem with social media, right? Mm -hmm. like, no one's doing this further investigating of, of anything anymore. And That's a great way of putting it. Right. You're spot on with that. Yeah. And it's, it's sad. It's sad that... We have been a society that has grown accustomed to immediate gratification, and so they want answers now. Mm -hmm. And so when they see a picture, they determine, does this fall in line with my biases? And if it does, boom, here's the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's wrong. It's fucking wrong almost every time, right? Well, and, and people are wrapping their identities around certain, you know, which I hope we, we end up discussing with Jack Donovan, who we're going to have on the show here soon, uh, and that is the tribalism aspect of humanity, and it is inflamed right now in society oh, yeah. through pol identity politics and mm -hmm. you know i'm in this camp over here and whatever everyone else is saying and thinking yeah it's that's, it's, that's what i'm gonna do it's this yeah go ahead please sorry that's the more important the when that kind of a modus operandi spills over into political views yeah and regardless of whether the guy you like says something wrong or right it's that's where it's, yeah, I think, becomes effect. It affects society even more than social media. There's more division than we've ever seen in, in any time right now because 
Uh, there's so much information being given at all times and people have to learn how to digest that. And most people can't. It's too much. It's too much. They just want like, oh my God, that's bad. And it's like, wait, is it? I don't know. Like, let me research. At my house, I end COVID by turning the news off. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. And now we don't have it. <laughs> COVID who? COVID who? I'm done with this. It's it's tough, man. It's tough having kids uh, during this time and, and trying to give, give them a normal lifestyle that they should be experiencing instead of like the society's like, oh, they can't do this because whatever. And I love the fact that I'm in Utah because Utah opened up a lot of sports early on compared to most states. And so our kids were given the opportunity to kind of live, you know. I mm-hmm. fuck, That's right. Fucking A. It was rough. It's it's rough. And you know, even speaking about it negatively, people are like, oh, my God, you don't care. It's like, no, I give a fuck. But, uh, you know, I give more fucks about my kids living uh, a, a fulfilled life and a fun life than, than fucking feeling like prisoners in their own household. And not being panicked about it. I think there's people that have so much information intake on a certain subject like COVID-19, for example, that they are legitimately afraid to move. Mm-hmm. I can't go to the mailbox without my mask on. Yeah, dude, it's mass hysteria. It can't get you when you're picking up U.S. mail. It's really, a, uh, I think, at least in our area, like Park City specifically, taking my daughters to the park last week. And I don't know if I've brought this up on the podcast episode previous to this, but if I repeated this story, guys, I'm sorry. Um, but there was a woman walking outside, and it's about 70 degrees. <laughs> She's from Chicago. I think I did actually bring this up. She was wearing four masks on her face. Oh, shit. And Smart. She had, she had a box of Good masks. for her. She didn't even have any kids. She's got strong lungs. Yeah, she, there's... She had and no kids. And we know why now, don't we? She had a box of masks with her. She was doing her part, <laughs> asking children if they need a mask. I got that joke. That's creepy as fuck, dude. Yeah. It's, it's this... <laughs> She's you know, a there, social justice warrior. There's a, there was just a study that came out. I think it was by Stanford or something. I haven't looked into it. This, oh, I haven't talked about it. But if this study is correct, if this is true, it said it's actually unhealthy to be wearing masks. But like, you, and you're going to find that, right? You're going to find a study that says, yes, it's good to wear a mask. And you're going to find a study that says, no, it's not. And, yep. and, and it all comes from like where the original opinion comes from and who's going to be studying it and like all the different biases that come with that. And this fucked up thing that we, we live in. And it's like, and it comes down to who gives a fuck what anyone else says. How do you feel? <laughs> how do you, how do you want to do it? And just handle it. Like I, I just, it's like that thing in Texas. They opened up the whole thing. They all, they removed all masks and people were like, Oh my God, I'm so offended. It's like, wait, they didn't tell you you can't wear a mask. They said just, you don't have to wear a mask. But if you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear the motherfucker. But if you want to, wear seven of them bitches. Who gives a fuck? Wow, it sounds like freedom. I try to figure out what <laughs> Dr. Fucci says to do. <laughs> I don't know if that's his name. Fucci. Yeah, Fucci, Fucci the and main the, doctor. If Fucci, you know the guy with that said put on two masks? If you're raised in a Hispanic short guy. household, <laughs> Fucci is actually a is term mean? that means... Oh, Fuji, it stinks. <laughs> oh, well, this that unintentionally worked out then, didn't it? <laughs> Dr. Uh, Stinky Mask. Oh, my God. <laughs> so funny. Jesus. Let's dive into a little bit of Rocco for maybe yeah. the audience who doesn't know uh, your story. Um, I mean, you can share as much as you want, but I'd be curious as to, I mean, you, you launched a military career. What, what happened yeah. before that? And then coming out of it yeah 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 uh Um, what you did and then all the way up to to where i'm at now yeah yeah i grew up in los angeles california in in a san in san fernando valley um played baseball since i was four traveled travel ball since i was seven um or just year round i didn't stop playing the game Mm -hmm. you know what i mean my parents instead of me potentially falling into the kind of the gang world we were associated with sports and sports and sports smart my father was a gangbanger gang banger gang member back in the day that wasn't really gang banging when he was he was more <laughs> like chains and belts and shit yeah. <clears throat> my brother was involved as well and so it was kind of the answer to to getting kids out of the gang world is getting them involved in sports at a young age so i played ball since i was really young uh i went to play junior college ball and then uh, i got a full ride to a kentucky school called owensboro uh in owensboro called brescia university i became academically ineligible i've struggled with um reading and dyslexia for, for many years. And, uh, it finally kind of caught up to me in, mm-hmm. in, in four year college when I was at a school with a bunch of nuns and priests who, who, 
who didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> they were gangsters, fuck, bro. <laughs> they were like, you can't read, fuck you. And I was like, I was like, what would Jesus do? And they didn't fucking send your ass somewhere else. <laughs> Mike, so, can't, Mike can't read. Yeah, so I got I got kicked out of that school, lost my scholarship, and um, you know. Before then, I knew my reading was an issue, and so I did theater college and theater in college. Right, I did some theater classes because it was easy to get an A and mm-hmm. whatnot. And so that kind of will follow us later on. But um, I was sitting at a bar with a buddy of mine who was in the Navy, watching uh, a Marine put a flag, an American flag, over the statue of Saddam, and as they're pulling it down, it was this mm-hmm. very memorable visual that I can't let go of. And I think a lot of people remember that moment. Um, they were interviewing his family, and his parents were like crying and they're so proud of their son and I'm like oh shit my family's never really looked at me that way you know I've never made anyone really proud I've always kind of been the the, the troublemaker the hard-headed one the just the knucklehead of the family and uh, I had a daughter that that was being born you know within months and I realized like it was time to do some shit and so I the next day I woke up went to the recruiter and, and joined I asked them what the hardest thing they had and they said special forces or army ranger um, and I didn't score high enough to be special forces. Uh, and so I decided to do army ranger. Uh, I watched black Hawk down and I was ready to go, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined the military in 2003. Um, did four years active duty with second of the 75th ranger regiment. So I was an infantryman, uh, did two deployments to Afghanistan, one to Iraq, got off of active duty after losing some friends in 2006. Um, I, I wasn't there. I was actually injured from ranger school and I decided I ended up doing the, 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 getting their stuff together, you know, going with them to, to, to their final resting place. I, mm. I carried some bras and was as part of that whole process. Um, and that really kind of pivoted my life again into a different direction. So Braza was talking to me a lot about how he wanted to be in the border patrol. He wanted to do special operations, of the border patrol. I got out of the military. I tested for the border patrol. I failed. So I went into corrections, <laughs> went into corrections. After two years, I was able to actually finally pass the tests, get into the border patrol in 2009, did that for about six and a half, almost seven years. And at that same time, I started doing YouTube with Matt Bess and Jared Taylor, which most people know as a Black Rifle Coffee crew. Um, that started the the whole movement of the roots of theater in college and where I felt really comfortable. And I've always wanted to produce a movie. Me and Jared brought the idea to the table for the business, and we did it. So we produced Range 15, and we produced um, Not a War Story, which is the documentary of us making range 15 and that was it man after that i remember my first day on set i said you know what this is what i want to do mm-hmm. yeah, fuck this i'm gonna i'm gonna focus on this and so as as that happened i started pivoting towards film and television in in a more serious manner not just youtube and here i am today uh, i'm an actor on mayans mc that's uh, my third season and i play a character named gilly gilberto lopez so that's about it and i have a lot of kids <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I uh, extra admire that because I myself am poor at spelling and a little on the more dyslexic side than the orderly. Yeah. I'm always switching things around, and so I understand how hard that can be. Yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, sometimes I send, so they give me the scripts early and then I sit there with my wife and read them and make sure that I'm reading them the right way. And then sometimes before I go on set, I'm sending her to these texts. So like, is this correct? And she goes, yes. I'm like, and then I call, I like, am I saying it right? She goes, yes, because even though I read it, feel good. I see it, I'll spin it. And so I have to really watch what I do on that. And, you know, I think on set, they know that too. So they kind of work with my lines are usually going to be later on. So I'm, I'm going to rep- repetition, 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 go. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's something you just navigate now. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It is, man. I use without spell correct, spell yeah. check. It's like the fact checker for my spelling. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to communicate, but the sad thing to me is it will allow me to use the wrong word but spelled correctly that sounds the same. Oh. But Oh, well. I'm the same. Just work through it when I email. Yeah, if you try and spell different, I don't spell different. I don't know how to spell different. I, the computer does it for me, but I, it's always defiant. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so how I how I correct myself, I highlight it and I speak it, and it's like defiant. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> I got to switch around a word. Yeah, yes. I don't know what letter it is, but I'm the same. I like, spell check saves my ass. I had... Uh our engineer, Todd McGee, one day was in the office, and he's like, can I see your phone? And I'm like, sure. And he says, 
you've been spelling does as dose, and I can't not do it anymore. <laughs> so he made it so my phone will only spell does. So every time it fixes it, and I'm like, thanks, Todd. Yes. <laughs> I have dosed a lot of doses in my day, I suppose. Dude, that is, oh, well. I, I, I know that feeling, man. It's uncomfortable, and it's the, I sit and stress over, I know when I send an email out, a lot of times I've stressed over it for a half hour and redone it five yeah. times, and I know it still looks yeah. semi-childish, but I'm like, I can't do it anymore. It, I have to move on. Same. I'm going to hit send. Yeah, Just I, work through it. Uh, oh, I can't spell neighbor, and I can't, even, I can't even visually see what that looks like, so I, it's always the guy next door. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, the guy next door. Because <laughs> neighbor... Smart, I do the yeah, same thing. Because neighbor is like, I can't even see what that looks like. I visually can't fucking picture what that is. I know it's an N, and then it goes, bleh, burr, right? And so it's like, fuck that guy. Guy next door. Well, <laughs> if you can't get... You've got to get the first three letters. Yeah. And I'll work and work and uh, work. Spell and then I ask... I, My wife and daughters get tired of me and everyone I work with because I'm like... How do you spell this? And as they start saying it, I'm like, got it. <laughs> I act like it's I did the it. It's same, but dude. I, you, you, all I need was four of the letters, it's and then the I same. act like I, oh, yeah, no, I just need a little head start so here. I it's, can't it's let the, the listeners think that I'm the smart one in the room but I'm because I'm not. So I'm, let me join you in this. My wife's family is all very intellectual people. When they do group texts, I am so fucked. <laughs> And I get corrected often. You're not spelling your correctly. Oh God, that Stop one that. that one still gets me, dude. Yeah. You are you are all those all those. Yeah, and when I, you're trying to talk shit online, and someone's like, "Near, yeah, like, fuck you, man." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant, dude? I'm a creative person. I was a fine arts major in college, yeah. so like, I do paint, I artsy fartsy type stuff. Yeah, and I have to, especially in my job. I mean, there's a lot of typing involved in marketing stuff. Yeah. You know, captions yep. and emails. So I got to get people to proof my work all always, the time. Yeah. Always. Even if you're good at it, always, right? Yeah. You, you miss things. Sometimes you read your own shit. Well, it makes you look like such an idiot if you spell like muscle break, B R E A K instead of B R A K E. Hey, you you're know, bringing up like, an example of something that I've done. Did you do that? <laughs> yeah, so I got yeah, a lot I, of heat for it. Yeah, I try to memorize certain things like that that I have to work with a lot, so I'm not. I love the one where, like, you've seen the tweets where women spell cologne wrong, and it says colon. <laughs> <laughs> so they say, I love the way his colon smells in the morning. And you're like, what the fuck? The first meme I saw of that, I was like, okay. And then I was like, something must be funny here. So I read over it for a while, and I was like, Stupid. okay, you like cologne. Like, I don't know why you make a meme of that. And then. After about 10 minutes, I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, that's funny because <laughs> you're making fun of the person because they're an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hilarious, man. It's my favorite one. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> I've got a, it's not a military story that you told me that I have never been able to completely unhear. What is it? Uh-oh. Cold, no camping, and then freezing temperatures, and like everybody under the same blanket. Oh, yeah. I wish you wouldn't have told me that. Well, you know. I mean, I know you do what you do to live, but that (laughs) seems. Survival. Survival. Anything under 32 degrees is not gay. That okay. Right. Yeah, that's a good rule. I knew there was some (laughs) thirty two degrees. I'm gonna remember that. And I don't care if you're gay or not. I'm just saying, like, you know, I've done some cold weather stuff in the military and you get handsy. I think we should uh, do a spelling bee with the three of us. No, No. (laughs) please don't. (laughs) My god. A whole podcast dedicated to a spelling bee. <laughs> we should get a seven-year-old to come in here and wipe the floor with us. I'll bring my six-year-old in. <laughs> Dude, when my kids have spelling bees, I feel for them. But, like, I have one son who's me. And I'm like, son, don't, don't even stress, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> like, just do your best. I remember I was out in the first round every time, and I'm like, this is stupid. Yes, <laughs> me too. Six is when I started 
asking my daughters how to spell stuff. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you're way better at this than I'll ever be. Yeah, my oldest daughter is like brilliant. And she's been spelling everything for me for a long time. I think it skips a generation. <laughs> I hope so. Our grandkids? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to apologize now. <laughs> if any of my grandchildren ever hear or see any of these podcasts, know that I'm sorry. <laughs> I know we never met, but I'm sorry. That's so funny. There's more to life than being able to spell everything correctly. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, dude, we're spoiled now, so we have spell check. We do have things like that who make me look good. You know what I mean? Remember when we used to have to navigate without uh, GPS? Bro, yes. I was just telling someone that the other day. I had the fucking Thomas guide. And you're like on this page. And yes. You're like, oh, fuck. I got to go to 74. And you're yes. like. Shh, shh, shh. Yes. <laughs> I drove from L.A. to Kentucky when I got that scholarship. And it was just me in a car, dude. And I was like, this is scary as fuck, dude. <laughs> Kids these remember. days will never know that. Never. I'd get off the map rack at like a gas station. Yep. When you got into a city and they'd have the big, more def- detailed city map and then you'd have to have your passenger confirming your location put your finger on it yeah do i turn right here left it's the is the street correct i think that was stressful i think i still have it because when i when i first moved here i didn't have a mount for my harley Mm -hmm. and i couldn't put my use maps on my phone so i was like landmark i was like okay i'm pretty sure that's the canyon and I'm on the other side of Salt Lake, yeah. and I got to go up. So I'm just going to, like, just go in that direction. <laughs> and I found the canyon. It's not easy, man. Yeah, these kids are spoiled these yeah. days. There's a lot of stuff they're never going to have to worry about. Spell check, maps. Well, it takes your phone one second to reroute if you make the wrong turn. Yep. That was a whole argument and <laughs> confusion and yelling. You're and like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then you're in, you're in Mexico. You're like, fuck. I'm not good. <laughs> I am wrong. So you got uh, Mayans, yeah. you've got the two podcasts. So do you, are you guys going to be filming another season, season four? Uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I can talk about it, but I mean, don't have any information about it. So we, we usually wait. I don't know. It's been very different because um, Hulu is also owned by Disney, if I'm correct, or something to that matter. We, we work with Hulu and, and Disney FX. And so normally after a couple episodes, you hear, but... We're now on episode eight, and I haven't heard. I'm assuming the numbers look good. I'm hearing it's the number one talk about show right now on the air. So, I, I, yes, you know, we're going to have a season four, I assume. I don't nice. know when. Um, in the meantime, I'm, uh, I'm auditioning for shows whenever they come up. You know, I have an agent who looks for anything that makes sense. And in, in the acting world, man, you audition for, for thousands and thousands of stuff, and you land two, right? You know what I mean? So I'm in that process, but, you know, Instead of committing 100% to acting, uh, I still have a day job when I come home. I still, you know, I do all my, my own personal stuff. I own my businesses, like the barbershop. I still own Lead Singer's Whiskey. I still own uh, Warfighter, Wait a second. Warfighter Tobacco. Hold on a second. What? You own Lead Singer's Whiskey? Yeah, I've been an owner of that for a long time. So I, uh, I love me some whiskey. I can get you some. You want some? Awesome. Good. I'm sober, dude. I've been sober now for almost two and a half years. Congratulations. And That's the, awesome. And the funny thing is, is like, I, I feel bad sharing like posts sure. for, for Let's Singer, so I don't. But yeah, I still own it. Um, yeah, it's a good company, right? It's, it's a business. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a business and it's a hustle and it's a grind. And uh, I think we're in like 40, man, 40 something, 37 states, I think it is. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're doing really well and it's a, it's a hustle and a grind. And so, where do you actually make it at? It's in Moore, Oklahoma. Moore, Oklahoma is where it's at. Yeah. And so it was a, a scissor tail distillery, is, is the original distillery that we bought into. And when, when the t shirt thing was going so well, there was a lot of money that made sense. And the marketing was doing so well, we kind of snatched into that. And then our movie, which most people probably don't realize, the movie Range 15, and the end of it, you know, if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. But um, <laughs> the answer to the zombie apocalypse was our whiskey, right? It was, that was part of the. You know, the joke, right? And so now, <laughs> anyone who ever saw the movie, like, oh, fuck it. They just marketed their whiskey really well. Yeah, yeah, we did. You know, and so. Okay, I've uh, got it. I've, I'm, this is very educational for me. <laughs> 32 degrees or under. A <laughs> lot of liquor for an apocalypse. <laughs> I'm good. 
I don't know. You probably saved my life two or three times right was there. Was it you in the scene where at the gas station? Yeah. And the zombie yeah, chick, the hot yeah. zombie chick. That was me. <laughs> that was an awesome scene. <laughs> <laughs> I had told my wife she had to leave the room when that scene was on. Oh, my God. Yeah. If you guys don't know it, I'm not going to give any more information. Go watch the movie. But, uh, you know, the movie was a success for us. We were the only independent film to hit three, three weeks in a row, number one. It's never happened in Amazon, and maybe maybe now, mm-hmm. but at that point, Amazon's never had anything like that. We also have a, you know, we have a record for the most. We are the fourth highest crowdfund in history mm. for movies for movies, uh, and it we, we crowdfunded something like one point two million. Wow, it's insane. You're never going to see it happen again in our world. I think I think people are either happy with it or not happy with it. Either way, um, we had the community come together and really support us on that, and and it did really well. And um, you know, the movie itself is nothing like you know, it's not award winning anything. It's a it's a comedy. It's a it's a it's a um, you know cult classic, it's right? Hilarious. And it's just yeah. silly dick fart jokes all day, right? <laughs> um, but the documentary to me, I'm super proud of because it really shows the the heart and soul of what it took to to film a movie, especially. Like from the way we did it, it was it was incredible. Um, but you know, I use a lot of that to help myself go and produce more stuff. And so, mm-hmm. I'm still in the world of producing and trying to. Right now, I'm I'm trying to get some some life rights to several big veteran stories. Uh, I'm finishing up uh, production of a documentary about Jason Dunham. Jason mm-hmm. Dunham is a Medal of Honor recipient Marine who jumped on a grenade. You know, who saved his buddies' lives. And so, we are producing a film called. Uh, the Gift a documentary is the Jason Dunham story, and that should be coming out later this year. And very excited about telling the stories of veterans that deserve to have a story, right? Like a mm-hmm. lot of people don't. Hollywood doesn't focus on a lot of the veteran stories anymore. I think um, m- maybe they're bored of it. Maybe they're tired of it. Maybe maybe they're exhausted of that. But I will never be, you mm-hmm. know. And so I'm out here trying to do stories that I think uh, should be told. I have uh, some some authorizations for several big, big stories. And so what I'm trying to do is with the whole clout of Mayans and and being part of Disney, I'm trying to slide into the door there and get several other movies produced. And so that's just the grind of what I'm doing daily on that. That's That's exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's a... I don't know. I never expected that was the space that I'd be living in, and that's that's what it is now. And so, it's tough, man. You know, how, how do you make a movie? You need funding. How do you get the funding? You have someone trust you with their money that they're probably not going to get back unless you made a fucking <laughs> big, big film. Great you know? movie, right? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, there's a, there's a few out there like Blair Witch Project. It cost them, I think, it was ten thousand dollars, and they made millions, right? And um, how to repeat that? Yeah, how do you repeat that? Yeah. Like Boondock Saints, the first Boondock Saints, like such a they, classic. They made a movie and they put it out there, and it completely flopped. And then years later, it took off. Right? It was this cult Weird. classic that, like, people were like, "You got to watch this movie." And then it fucking turned into what it is today. That's how I got to it. Yeah. Later on, someone just told you about it. Well, right? people were like, "Oh, this, that, Boondock Saints," and then one day I was like. I should probably watch that. Yeah. So I watched it. So mm-hmm. I was one of the late coming, the average, I like to think of myself. <laughs> we need to get Mike into a movie, maybe with Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. <laughs> Is he still alive? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know. That's a fair I, question. I have no idea. No, yeah, he is. Yeah, I don't know. But he's just, he's got some Jack Nicholson flavor. Yeah. He, he always reminds me of. To make Jack me want to be a better man. <laughs> I like. <laughs> I liked it when he beat that guy in the freeway with a nine iron. Some what movie? thirty years ago. No, what? it was in real life. Oh <laughs> it's shit! Like in California, he got into an altercation and came out with like a ping black dot or whatever. Oh, that's funny. Ping black was, dot. Well, I don't know. Seventies or nineties golf clubs or whatever. <laughs> I'm Sorry. just saying. I don't have a clue, and you're the one. That I knew. Does I golf. knew it was a golf club. I knew it was a golf club. <laughs> I swear, information just enters your brain and it stays there. <laughs> Sadly, you useless. use it. No, we were just talking about that on the other episode. Like Mike is a savant when it comes to guns. He knows everything. Yeah. Like antique road show is what we talked about in the last. Like you, you ever nerd out on that show? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just watch them bring the artifact up, and then that person just knows every detail. Yeah. That's just awesome. That's Mike. Yeah. Thanks for saying that, yeah. Rich. But <laughs> that's really nice. I don't think like that. He's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone watching on YouTube, look. Oh, I can't help it. He's blushing. It's too nice. 
I don't know. You're a very smart man. Well, th- again, thank you. You might not be able to read, but you can retain spell. some info. Uh, they say there's a lot of people that have dyslexia. They they pick up another skill set. I know? think it's... Um, I've noticed a lot of mechanics I've worked with over the years that are poor at spelling. Yeah. So maybe that. I don't know. I can't. I'm not a mechanic for shit. I maybe break. you would if you tried it a little bit. Fuck. <laughs> I, I don't want to be the guy that my wife goes to for everything. I say, no, hey. just pay for someone, please. <laughs> You're halfway there. <laughs> you already can't spell. You could probably <laughs> use the wrenches and it would be uh, awesome. She wants me to change. Dude, we have like 12 flickering lights in our house right now. And she's like, well, you got to change those. I'm like, fuck. Fuck, man. I hate doing shit like that. Like, yeah. I fucking hate it. <laughs> like, I hate doing basic-ass fucking dad shit. Like, you want me to go fucking kick in a door? You want to go fight the neighbor because they fucking yelled at her dog? I don't give a... I'll fuck everybody up. <laughs> you want me to change lights in the fucking house? God damn it, bro. I don't want to go find the fucking ladder, set that motherfucker up, unscrew this fucking thing, and then, and then if there's one goddamn thing wrong, I fucked it up. Like, no, man, I don't have that. I don't want that pressure. Don't don't put me that shit. I'll pay fucking anyone to do yeah. that. That's why I got kids. Fuck. See, not That's why me. I have Mike. <laughs> I'll try and try as hard as I can and do everything I can not to pay. No, 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 not me. I the, work harder. <laughs> some, some years ago, my, uh, just a weird example, but the foot valve on my well started to leak. Yeah. So the well would turn on, then drain I don't even know back. what that is. Anyway, it was annoying. It would click <laughs> on and off all night. It's I'm a like, well like a what, like water well? That's where we get the water. Wow. Not the sponsored water. Okay. I'm talking about the... The house water. Yeah. Got it. You know, I flush the toilet with it. It's not to this arrowhead quality at all. <laughs> but I did some research, and I made that tool hanging on the wall there that would take the pitless valve... Oh, unhook yeah. it so you could pull the wire and the okay. pick line and the pump and everything out of the well. Yeah. Anyway, it wouldn't come out, so I had to change the pit list. So I had a buddy help me, or maybe two, and dug it out with shovels, changed the pit list, got it out of the way, pulled the well out, put a foot valve on it, extended the pipe so it wouldn't like squirrel cut it, put it all back in, and put it back on. And I was telling this dude that works at a water place what i did and he's like what he's like a normal person would call an excavator and they would come and dig and leave and then you'd call a plumber and they'd come and unhook the lines then you'd call a well guy and he'd do the well work and then you call the plumber back and the excavator back and i'm like why would you do that? <laughs> Mike was excited would to tell just... the story to this plumber. When you're explaining well, it, I heard like uh, Charlie Brown's mom going, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. and I'm like, so did what? I. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> what? Mike just invented a tool to fix it's the problem. Stories like that that will forever keep us below the 50 mark of listeners. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I probably no. shouldn't have shared that. <laughs> I shared too much. There's going to be someone watching me like, Fuck yeah, man. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I'm looking at the <laughs> tool right person. now. That guy shares it, though. So that's a good thing. He shares it with his friends who give a fuck, too, right? So that's yeah, all you need. Somewhere there's someone that's yeah. excited about home repair. He's got a whole friend group, just like yours, who sat there and dug a fucking hole. Like, th- those guys will share that. You're good. It's uh-huh. a good, it's a good right, story. Okay, thanks. That makes me feel better. <laughs> that's the reason my Harley's in here is because I had a bolt break off, and it's rare they don't make them anymore. Oh, God. Yeah, it was super annoying. We found it, and we're f- I'm fixing it tonight. That's out for delivery. I didn't give you the good news because we were super busy in the office, yeah. but <laughs> out for delivery. Bro, I, I'm terrible with fixing shit, and I've, I've acknowledged that, and I don't give a fuck anymore about it. So, like, I won't try. I'm not going to get Fair. any better. Fair. Right? I'm gonna, it, I have a new car, and then I trade that motherfucker in for a new car in about three years because as soon as it starts to have issues, fuck you. Right? <laughs> I like fuck your attitude. You. I don't. I, I know what I'm good at, and that is not it. So I've given up on it. I don't want to ever be better yeah. at that. I'm I've just, tried. I've tried and failed. My wife's father was an engineer. He built their house, every brick with yeah. his bare hands. He can fix anything like you, Mike. And that's a lot to... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not with like you, that. Though, yeah. know, know your she strengths. Expects it. I, like, I have a friend who's like that. He yeah. fixes everything. And he's the guy I call. Because I, I always tell him, too, I said, oh, man, I wish I was as manly as you. I wish I was, <laughs> I wish I was the, I wish, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure my wife wished she married that guy who's good at that stuff. 
But she got me. You know what I mean? And but I'm good at could, other things. You could probably kick that guy's ass. So Yeah, but I mean you gotta you can't kick a fucking lights ass and make it work. Okay? <laughs> Cause or else I'd do it. Yeah, you can't kick the filament to light back up, huh? What the fuck is that? <laughs> the part that lights up in the middle, like on incandescent. He, it's fucking brilliant. Yeah. I'm telling you. Brilliant. The knowledge. It's a beautiful mind. <laughs> that's yeah. what, that's what you You're the guy from the beautiful mind. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I wish we could show everyone right now how perfectly organized every tool is to. That's the other thing. Like, this was my garage with the amount of stuff that you have. Yeah. It would just. It would be a mess. My father-in-law came to the house, and he's like, hey, wh- what do you have in your toolbox? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, why is there gardening stuff in there? I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. I have one. It has a ton of shit in there, and it's just shit. That I don't, is there supposed to be a gardening section in a garage? Because I don't have that. Yeah. Right? I thought it goes in a toolbox. I don't know. I, have, I know where my boxing gloves are. Yes. <laughs> you know I mean? Finally, there's some balance on this <laughs> podcast. I don't feel so outnumbered. Because he and I are a lot alike in this vein, and it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Mike's been teaching me a lot about uh, preparedness. That's one thing that... Preparedness, yeah. like being ready for like when the shit hits the fan? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike's I'm good. already he's, ready. He's good, he's good at that. Anything that. below 32 degrees and make sure you have liquor. <laughs> Done. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the greatest at survival. Like when the whole COVID thing popped, mm-hmm. I realized how far I've gone to my training, like how far I've gone away from it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was like... Oh shit! I haven't even looked at my mags in a while. Let me go check these motherfuckers. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, goddamn it! Like, yeah, I have? yeah, I'm checking everything again. And, it, and it, I told my wife like I took a week off work and I'm just organizing my shit. She goes, really? I'm like, yeah, that's how much shit I have, and that's how much shit I've forgotten. And I want to get my mind right again, right? Because it got to a point with COVID here in Utah, right? With Utah, if you looked at the news, we already hoard everything, right? We're already uh. They, they already prepare here in Utah based on a lot of LDS backgrounds, uh, commonalities of just that. Which that a really good lifestyle. It's a really good state for that. And it's then when, the best. Yeah, it's it the really best. Is. It really is. And then COVID fucking scare, it went up 80%. 80%. Out of every other fucking state, you couldn't find toilet paper here for sure, but you also couldn't find a fucking steak, flour, or fucking rice. And I was like, holy fuck, a family of fucking eight, and we're fucked. Like, I was going to start beating the fuck out of my neighbors because I know they have it. See, you know? that's a strength. It's a, it's a strategy, right? But I used them as my friends, and so, so we really got nervous, and I actually sat there and was like, dude, my dumbass, I have a storage area. It's completely empty. I have a fucking 150 gallon thing that's completely empty. Mm-hmm. Like I have everything I need. I've just never prepared it. Mm-hmm. And it was like, a, it was definitely a wake up call to be like, oh, dude, you're so trained and you're so dumb at the same time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I have all the skills I need. Well, it's times like and, these yeah. that remind you and now you're. you're taking action. Yeah, no, for sure. Now I've prepared everything. I've got, yeah, yeah I've made choices to like, okay. Don't be that asshole, right? Mm-hmm. Don't be the guy that knows what to do and just doesn't do it out of just mm-hmm. pure laziness and making excuses. And it's like, yeah, well, this isn't the big one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this isn't the one I really need to worry about. Don't wait for the big one. Get oh, ready now. God. I like the uh, calming sense that it gives you to know that you won't be starving in a week. And, yeah. you know, you'll have a few things. And if something happens, you won't be up against the wall right then. Yeah, man. I, I remember. There was a lot of things about the COVID that was that was good for my family and good for me mentally. Be like, okay, it this was probably complete fucking mass hysteria for no reason, but at least I know now, like I should be better off than what I was, right? Like, like, okay, stupid, you you had your chance and it was a little bit of a scare, but now I'm ready, you know. And and when I say ready, I'm still not as prepared as you. I'm sure I still there's still uh, another level to this. I can't take it. I just. Maybe another scare, I'm going to have to get there. You know what I mean? I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, well, you just need to be where you're comfortable. It's like anything. I know my neighbors are prepared, and I know I'm bigger than them, so that's, that's what I'm a, talking about. That's a win. <laughs> you know, I rode that wave for a while until moving out here. Because yeah. in Dallas, it got pretty crazy, too. It, yeah. I mean, it was wild. People were nuts. My wife was crying because we couldn't buy diapers. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, we, like, we did the, the cloth thing for a little yeah. bit. And baby wipes. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, what the hell? Yeah. These are essential items. Yeah, yeah, well, I never thought of that. Yeah. No, people forget That's about what that you shit. thought she a lot. She broke huh? down in a Walmart, and I felt terrible. And, and then I looked at myself, and I was like, what are you doing? This is your fault. <laughs> right. No, yeah. you, you look, in the end of the day, yeah. as the man, you don't have to be good at fixing shit. But in the end of the day, yeah. 
when shit like that goes falls short, you have to put that on you. Mm -hmm. Like I should have seen this coming. Yeah. My wife takes care of the kids. I do everything else right in my head. And when the, my wife was like, babe, uh, I don't know if we have any protein, any meat to eat next week. I'm like, Shut the fuck up. And then look in the freezer. I'm like, holy fuck. I don't even have an extra freezer either. So then I ordered an extra freezer, right? Like these things. I'm like, what the fuck was I doing? Holy fuck. You have a tribe, man. I have a lot of kids, dude. Yeah. And you know, here's a cool thing. Like, uh, you know, the 16 year old and an 18 year old are badasses. So they can figure shit out. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are state champion wrestler females. Like they're fucking badasses, but that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's awesome. But the other kids, our liability. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Right. Oh, we should reword that just a little bit. <laughs> no, but in the end of the day, like I, this is from a buddy of mine. We talk about survival and everything. Like if they can't put in any kind of work, they are a liability. And you have to say, well, what is their job going to be? And in the case of in the event where like shit hits the fan, the little ones are the ones I'm terrified about. Like mm -hmm. they can't fucking help themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Like my 11 year old boy is not ready to do anything serious, but, exist and so i have to find something that like okay we'll try and carry this weight and don't let it hurt you because then when you have it, it just becomes this thing i even have a baby right i had a baby at the same time so i have a baby I'm like fuck this baby becomes a pain in the ass because now my wife has to also nurture this baby stinking I to, babies right it, it, it's a hard time <laughs> yeah, you're like fuck i had a baby right before this motherfucker happened and shit's yep. going down yeah so thinking of all the things and it's like the baby becomes the biggest like headache and Okay, I can take care of these, but the baby's like, fuck, man, he's so fragile, right? Is he, is he going to have all the shots he needs? Are we yep. going to be able to get the opportunity? Because yep. remember, prescription drugs at one point started becoming like fucking scarce. That's a lot, right. a lot of things you don't think of. Yeah, and so this baby who's just, it became crazy. And then is my wife going to be able to pump during fucking all this shit? It just was a lot going on, and mm. I was like, all right, what the fuck are we going to do now? And it, it, it seriously, I took a week off for it because I was like, I, I can't even fucking fathom what the fuck the answer is right now. You got to regroup. Yeah, and it's not war, bro. I'm trained for the war, right? Like, <laughs> they're hungry. Okay, well, I can fucking go to war, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you know. That's not the answer here. Maybe the military should have a tactical baby feeding <laughs> course. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to create it. <laughs> no, it's just... Let it, us know in the comments below, guys, if you want. <laughs> it, it, uh, it put things in perspective. Um, and, you know, I think I'm better prepared now, but I think I'm always trying to think of what's the next step in my little world that my family can do and, and, and everything. So I guess it put me in a better place of thinking, you know, and getting, you know, and I think thinking is the first part of pre preparing. Yeah, I had a very similar experience during that. I'll share it. Yeah, I did. My wife, like, texts me and she says, you can't get hand sanitizer. And I was like, what? I go home and we're talking about it and she's like, kind of like, you know, nervous about it. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. Like then if you can't get it, you can't get it. Like, yeah. Okay. I felt like you felt. And then a couple of days later, it dawned on me that some time earlier I was somewhere and they had one of those big stacks of hand sanitizer. Yeah. Like on the floor and making like a big pyramid or something. And I grabbed a couple cases of it. Yeah. And it dawned on me. It was out in the garage. So I was like, well, I'm going to go look and see, like, if that was really, yeah. you know, something I really did or not. I pulled out two cases of hand sanitizer <laughs> and you took it into cases? the two cases unopened. Why? Well, because I thought I might need it. <laughs> right? What the <laughs> fuck? Well, I thought it would be awesome if you couldn't wash your hands and maybe you had to do a little first aid or whatever. Like, who wow. knows? Touché. And so you had it. Yeah, so I put it on the kitchen table, and my wife was, like, overjoyed. She started taking it over to her dad, and she You're ran some across the field to her brother, and she put it in everybody's cars. And at that time, we thought we were all going to die, so we're, like, if you had to go into the store, we're, like, slathering ourselves. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, like, wiping it all over the steering wheel and the blinker switch and everything. Yeah. Crazy. It was awesome. That's, you were prepared. I was I not lucky on that. So one. us at Lead Singers Whiskey, what we did was, you know, like a lot of other distilleries, we were able to make, you know, a seventy percent or higher alcohol content of hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. Yeah, and so it actually kept that company uh, afloat during that time because, and the other thing was a lot of people were going to drinking more. So mm -hmm, sure, yeah, a lot of people drank more, and then we we're also I able did. to we we're also able to sell 
a lot of hand sanitizer, and we donated a shit ton of it to fucking any law enforcement, you know, medical and everything else. But it was interesting. Now you could even still to this day, you go to a fucking place and has hand sanitizer. Smells like fucking some straight up tequila. <laughs> oh, it's so yeah. bad. And you're like, oh god. And oh, I'm sober, bro. Yeah. I, was, I made this post about being sober. I was like, my hands are fucking alcoholics now. <laughs> and people were like, oh my god. I was like, no, 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 I'm not drinking again. I just my hands are I, every time I put that shit on. Jesus. Contact. Well, that was a little <laughs> panicky there for a while. I thought the uh, virus would kill you if it got you. It made, but, everyone, it made everyone feel that way. Mm-hmm. It made everyone feel. What would you do for meat? And that might be a good answer. I know, I know we're coming down to the hour here soon, but for meat, do you have a freezer full of meat? Or, or no. no? Uh-uh. Are you guys vegans? Yep. No, 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 we're not. We're, we're Mormon. We're not vegan. But uh, I've tried to do different kinds of food in the past. Yeah. And I, I, I can't do it. I'm yeah. with you. Like, I know I don't want to change these light bulbs. Well, I'm not going to rotate a bunch of canned food that I don't want to yeah, eat that's, anyway. That's hard to do. Mm-hmm. Just get freeze dried. Yeah. So you have get a lot a of freeze dried stuff? I don't want to say that on this podcast, (laughs) but what I want to say is if you get freeze dried, you can do, let's just say I could make you a taco right now if the power went out and you'd be super happy about it. (laughs) I actually would. So I think for me and a lot of people to get it in a small space and not have to worry about power or anything like that. Yeah. Boom. One and done. So you recommend freeze dried over anything else? Highly, especially for me. Yeah. Because I, well, I don't have any other way. I'm not gonna fight through freezers and half a cow, and in a yeah. year and a half, it's freezer burned anyway. Yeah. No, I hear you. That's freeze dried is. How long is the shelf life of freeze dried? It depends on the product, but when you start to get into things with very high fat content, like milk, I believe it's about ten to fifteen years. Oh, and I think shit. you can stretch it out by how you store it. I keep it in a temperature controlled humidity controlled room so I, i'm not ready <laughs> oh, no. I'm, not, I'm not ready but I'm, when you yeah. talk um other kinds of staples you know rice and whatnot that's been freeze-dried you're looking at about 30 to maybe 35 years what the i bought it like this dude. after i'm dead you can haul it to the dump <laughs> yes. Like I'm keeping it forever And then I won't have to worry about it Like right One and done Think do you, about that Do you freeze dry it yourself? No You, you buy You can buy dry. a freeze dryer But who wants to bake a lasagna And then freeze dry it When yeah. I can just buy a case of Freeze dried lasagna, dry lasagna. Fucking crazy I've had some freeze dried meals in the military And I wasn't a fan of them But No I'm not a fan of it either That's yeah. why I still have it <laughs> Sauces are important Honestly I went through You're doing an audit right now Because yeah. you're listening to him Yeah and I've done plenty of audits myself, and I was like, Mike, I need some help here. And he set me up. So we've got, for all of our, my whole family, a year's worth of food that we could live off of for a year, right? That's, yeah. That will run out eventually. And I'm not done storing it, but it's not going to expire till 2050. Yeah, I got to get on this freeze-dried trip. Yeah. I got to get on Well, hmm. I think uh, freeze-dried meatloaf would taste a lot better and be a lot more digestible. Then I've got a cat. He's nice and everything, but, like, at some point, I would eat him, right? Yeah. But I don't want to eat house cat. Yeah. Would you eat a person? <laughs> you know, I'd like to say I wouldn't, but people do. Yeah. That movie Alive always They're not, me. yeah. I, whenever you talk about Donner Party or, <laughs> you know, sailing, you know, ship stories or yeah. any time where people eat people, I think at core that really bothers everybody. And I like to think of myself as not the guy that's going to march over and <laughs> not the first one say field dress his neighbor. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> hey, John has a nice ass. <laughs> <laughs> he works out. Yeah. I see him in I those joggers. Yeah, he, yeah, he's sober. He doesn't smoke. That's some good meat. Yes. <laughs> Cannibalism <laughs> is really a subject that we don't address. <laughs> Man, that'd just be crazy. I told Mike uh, that I, you know, would definitely take to my hunting skills, but he gave me a dose of reality, and he's like, you know, how many hunters here here in Utah, especially uh, the Mormon uh, community, there won't be any meat. There's not. No, there's not. I like the freeze dried idea. It's actually the first time I've ever heard that. Um, you know, so it's actually kind of changing my mind a lot about a lot of things. 
So nice. that's cool. I'm going to go home and definitely uh, talk to the wife and say, can we budget for a lot of freeze-dried shit? Mm-hmm. I just want to say this. If something happens and you guys make the decision to eat me, mm-hmm. it, it's okay. <laughs> Don't be guilty about it. You're just doing what you have to do. <laughs> I, I get that I'd be I, the first guy that you eat, and I'm fine with it. I just don't want you to carry the burden of guilt that could come with that. Uh, if I decide to eat you, I won't feel bad. I just said, okay, I, I appreciate right. you, though. Okay, perfect. I'd appreciate you. I'm doing what I can. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make some good high-fat marbly substance uh, here. Yes, <laughs> lots of flavor. Mm. All those gas station burritos and zingers. I wouldn't exactly call it grass-fed, but... <laughs> Do what you can with what you have. A little, a little Wagyu. Is mm. it bad that I'm getting hungry right now? <laughs> it's about yeah, that time, it's, bro. It's disturbing. It's about that time. Mm. Yes. All right. Uh, so, uh, full circle. Vincent Rocco Vargas at Vincent Rocco Vargas. Yeah. On Instagram. Your podcast is called. Your my two podcasts. My podcast is the, the Vinnie Rock podcast. And then the other podcast is the Branches of Struggle. Uh, both you can see those I film those live well the branch of struggle well both of them I'll be posting live on the Vincent Rocco Vargas Facebook page and then on the other side there'll be uh, Vincent Rock the Vinny Rock podcast is on iTunes and Spotify already there's like mm-hmm. two three years worth of that branch of struggle is still getting uploaded everything's started so you can find me there you can find me on Instagram at Vincent.Rocco.Vargas and I answer every single message so if there's anything you need from me hit me up he does. I do. And so. Uh, uh, no. Well, you have the wrong number. You have the wrong number. Okay, I texted you last <laughs> week. <laughs> no yeah. reply. I'll give you the right number and we'll be good. But, you know, that's it, man. You ghosted Mike. Send your message to the correct place. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, running the Veteran Organization at Veteran.com. Uh, we're really trying to build uh, transition centers for veterans. And it's not easy. I'll tell you that. It's been, a, it's been a hell of a ride. We're struggling like a motherfucker, but uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to figure it out. Awesome. Yep. Guys, go show your support. Subscribe. Give them a follow. It was really awesome having you on today. No, it was, Appreciate and it. thanks again. Oh, no, for sure. Thank you. I feel like we're going to go 50. <laughs> I do. I feel it like in the core. 50 viewers? 50, well. Downloads? 50 viewers, but across all platforms, like oh, added totally. together. <laughs> we'll hit it. Aren't you glad yeah. you came today? We'll hit it. I, I love it. <laughs> It'll change somebody's life, maybe. Thanks again to Arizona. Please don't sue us. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your week. Yes, sir. Bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with all your home slicers.